my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got another lovely lacy shawl that is a pineapple shawl. Now I have done pineapple stitching before, but this I thought was such a fun variation. Well, because it has granny clusters um, and the, the chaining, very, very, very simple. And I just thought it would be fun to share with you guys. So for this piece, I used Lion Brand Ferris Wheel, and this is the colorway of Full Moon. I used about three skeins of this. By the way, this video is not sponsored, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I used. So I went into a third skein, so it's 270 yards per skein, and I did need to go into the third skein. Now also, I used a size K focus, 6.5 millimeter hook. So if that gives you sort of any indication as to how much yarn you might need. Um, and I think that this came out awesome. Mm. And so I'm going to be using the same yarn for this tutorial. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. All right, round one. Well, we got to start from someplace, don't we? All right, so we're going to start very much like we do for a granny square. We're going to start with our slip knot and a chaining of four to create our ring. So one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring. There we go. And then into that ring, we're going to be working some stitches. So first we chain up three for our first double crochet, and then two more double crochets for our first cluster. So we've got three doubles. Okay, and then chain three. One, two, three, three more doubles into that same ring in the center. One, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, three more doubles. One, two, and three. Chain three again. One, two, three. All right, and then three more doubles. However, this is where we actually stop our first round because we're going to need a flat edge and it'll make more sense as we go on. All right, so believe it or not, this is our first round, or, well, sorry, our first row. We're not doing rounds, we're doing rows for this project. So this is the end of row one. All righty, so for row two, we have actually options here, believe it or not even at this early stage. Now, as you can see, I have sort of a, a sawtooth edge on, this is the, the top edge, by the way, of my piece. And that's achieved by using slip stitches. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also gonna show you another alternative if you would like some loops, you know, that is an option as well. So if you want, to have a, a sawtooth kind of edge, what you would do is from this point, you would turn your work and slip stitch into these three double crochets, just slip stitch your way across 
and then slip stitch into that chain three space. And then from here, you would chain up three, and then two more doubles for our first cluster. And so you see that this is our bottom edge, our sawtooth edge, and then chain three, one, two, three, and then three doubles into that same space. And we would continue on with the, the rest of the row. However, I want to also show you how you can do the loop method, which I think might be a little bit easier. So we're going to backtrack just a little bit. And I'm going to undo these slip stitches here. And I just have to finish up this last double crochet that I just undid. But I just wanted to give you the choice of variation, okay? So let me just fix that up there. All right, so basically what you can do from here would be to chain up three, one, two, three, and then turn your work. And then this is gonna create a, a loop so from here, you can then go into this space right here, this first chain three space with your first cluster of three doubles. Chain three. And three more doubles. And then from here, chain one, and then into this spine, you know, this middle space here, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. You know, so this is very, very, very similar to a typical granny square, at least at the moment. So I did my three doubles, my chain three, I need three more doubles. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be doing the, the loop. However, if you want to do the slip stitches, by all means, go right ahead. Don't let me stop you. I just, I like variation. You know me. I always say, march to the beat of your own bongos, and I mean it. <laughs> so from here, chain one, and then into this space right here, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So that's two and three doubles, chain three, and three more doubles. Now, the only thing about doing the, the loop edging is that not every little bippy, so to speak, has a loop. See, like, for instance, we have a loop here but we don't have one here and it will alternate as we go along. So you might find that that's not a look that you're going for, but considering how busy the overall pattern is, I still think it looks you know, pretty darn neat. So I'm gonna keep the loops in, but if you want, you can do the slip stitching. So for instance, from here, you would slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, and then slip stitch into this chain three space right here. Or you could do the loop method, which is what I'm going to do for the next row. Alrighty. All right, row three. So for, from here, we're going to chain up three or slip stitch, you know, depending upon what you want to do. One, two, three, turn the work and into my chain three space, do my two clusters. So that's three doubles. chain three, three doubles, and 
All right, so now we are going to start on the foundation of our pineapples. So from here, chain three, and into the chain one space, double crochet, just one double crochet, chain three, and then into the center spine, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Three doubles, chain three, three more doubles, there we go. And then of course, for the sake of symmetry, chain three, one double crochet into the chain one space, chain three, and then our two clusters in the last space here. Do not be confused by this space here. No, no, no. We're only working into this one, just so you're aware. All right, so into here, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Yeah, I do not wish to confuse you by adding an extra loop in there. You know, we do not work into, you know, this loop or, you know, into this loop right here. Nope, nope, nope. You know, I, I want to make things fanciful and full of options and choice for you, not to give you agita or confusion. No, that's not my objective. All right, so I got my three doubles, a chain three, and two more doubles to go for my total of three. There we go. So as you can see, yes, we've got some little loops at the bottom there, and so this double crochet and this double crochet, it's going to be the foundation for our pineapples. All right, onwards to row four. All right, row four. So we chain up three, turn the work into that first chain three space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Yeah, the, the beginning of every row is exactly the same, and the ending of every row is the same. Very convenient that way. So three doubles, chain three, three doubles, Okay, so now we have to build this pineapple outwards. We need to give it some room to grow. So from here, chain three, whoop, three, into the double crochet, do a double crochet, like so, and then just got to untangle my yarn a bit, sorry. Then after doing a double into the double, chain four. Now, as far as the chaining for this pattern is concerned, it's very, very simple. It's either a chaining of three, four, or five. So right now we did a chaining of three. Now we chain four. One, two, three, four. And this is the only instance in which we chain four for this particular pattern is when we're creating this sort of cradle right here, if you will. You can call it a cradle, um, you know, or a lacrosse stick or what have you. So we chain three, double crochet, chain four, double crochet. Now for the sake of symmetry, chain three again. And into the spine, you know what to do. Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I've got two, three, chain three, three more doubles, okay, so then on this side, we need to do the same thing. 
So that will be chaining three, one, two, three, into the double, do a double crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four, and double crochet again. Now, for the sake of simplicity, you might be able to, instead of doing four chains here, you might be able to do three. I did finagle and fiddle around with this pattern a bit. Um, however, into this cradle, we're going to need to do nine double crochets on the next row. So nine double crochets in a three chain space, that's cutting it kind of close. So buyer beware, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not going to dictate, but I'm going to suggest. So from here, chain three, and then into this last space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Chain three, uh, yeah, three doubles, then chain three, and then three doubles. Okay, very good. Okay, so now your piece should look something like this, I hope. And so we have our sort of loopy eyelet edge along the top, which I think it looks rather nice. What do you think? You know, it's not 100%. It's a little higgledy-piggledy, but I think it works. All right, so from here, we're heading on to row five. All right, row five, gonna start as we have been. Chain three, one, two, three, turn the work into the chain three space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I get three doubles, chain three, three doubles. By the way, for the record, I do not have a written pattern for this. I did see an old diagram of a doily pattern, and you know, this is part of that doily pattern, what I did was it was originally a, a square and then I altered it and I changed the, the numbers of chains and so forth. So there's no actual written pattern for this. You know, this is my finagling and whatnot, um, you know, alterations and so forth. So yeah, I, I do not have a written pattern for those of you that are probably going to ask. I'm sorry. Uh, just wanted to make that clear. So from here, after doing our first clusters, chain three, and then into the cradle, nine double crochets. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this should be nine. I always like to double count. So I got three, three, and three. Perfect. Okay. Because, you know, quite frankly, it's really discouraging, you know, to get to the end of a row and then you're working on the next row and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I miscounted. Well, that is very important with this pattern, like most, you know, double count and then you only have to do the piece once as opposed to having to, you know, constantly redo stuff. So from here, chain three and then into the center spine, three doubles, chain three, three doubles, like always. Yeah, as far as this pattern, I thought that this would make a really cool shawl, um, but 
that's just part of what I like to do. I like to find diagrams and see how I can alter them into something else. And just because it's a doily pattern doesn't mean that it has to be a doily. You know, most of the times, just because you're using a really tiny hook and really fine thread, well, you can make, you know, a, uh, a tablecloth into a blanket with the same pattern nine times out of 10, just instead of using thread, use yarn. All right, so I got my center spine, chain three, and then into the cradle, nine doubles. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe. All right, let's see what we got. We got three, we got six, we got nine. Perfect. All right, so from here, chain three. And then into this chain three space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I got my three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. All right, so that is the end of row five. So the pineapples are blossoming. <laughs> All right, onwards. All right, row six. Okay, so you should know what to do by now, I hope. Yes, yes, yes. Chain three. Turn the work. And then into that chain three space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. And I tell you, once you get the hang of this pattern, you won't even need me. You can just look at what you've already accomplished, use your work as your own reference point, and you won't even have to think about it. It's a beautiful thing. So from here, chain three, three more doubles, Okay, chain three. Now we need these pineapples to grow. So into the first double crochet, do a single crochet, chain three, skip a double, go into the next with a single, chain three, skip the next, go into the next double with a single, chain three, skip the next, go into that next double with a single, chain three, and do it once more. Skip one, going into the last with a single crochet. So you should end up with four loops. Okay, it's very important. That's why I always double count my nine double crochets because you need these four loops. Otherwise, you're gonna have a problem and I don't want you to have a problem. All right, so from here, chain three, into the center spine, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I got my three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Okay. 
Okie dokie. Chain three. Single crochet into the first double. Chain three. Skip one going into the next with a single. Pull out some more yarn as needed. Chain three. Skip one going into the next with a single. Chain three. Skip one going into the next with a single. Chain three. Skip one going into the last double with a single. Chain three. And then into our chain three space, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. There we go. It's coming along nicely. All right, onwards. Okay, row seven. Chain up three. Turn the work into that first chain three space. Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I got three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. All right, now here's the thing. Now, like I was saying before, as far as the chaining, it's either three, four, or five. Well, here's come here. Here's where the five chains come into play. Now, a way to remember it that helped me out is um, we need to go into the, the, first, the first row of loops, okay, on the pineapple, you know, the first eyelets, so to speak, um, the arches, however you want to call it. Um, we need to go into this first row. So from here, we need chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then into that loop, single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the next loop, chain three, single crochet into the next loop, chain three, and single crochet into the last loop. All right, so we went from four loops down to three loops. Okay, so from here, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then into the center spine, same as before, Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. All right, chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Single crochet into the first loop, chain three. Single crochet into the next loop, chain three. Single crochet into the next loop, chain three. And single crochet into the last loop. Okay, now chain five, and then we have our clusters at the end. So one, two, three, four, five, 
and then three doubles, chain three, three doubles. One, two, three, and three more doubles. Okay, and there you are for the end of row seven. All right. All right, row eight. Eight is great. All right, chain up three. One, two, three. Turn the work into the chain three space. Three doubles. Chain three and three more doubles. All right, now here's here's the the thing. Since this is another great great way of remembering, uh, you know, since we did our first chaining of five in the last row, this is where we need to start creating the foundation for a new pineapple. So from here, after doing your cluster, chain three cluster, here we chain one. And then into this chain five space, do another cluster of three doubles. Now, yes, this is going to seem a little bit weird, but it will make, <clears throat> excuse me, it will make more sense as we go on. Trust me. Do you trust me? I hope so. So from here, chain five, because we're still keeping in with the chaining of five right now. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five single crochet into that first loop, chain three, single crochet into the next loop, chain three, and single crochet into the next loop. All right, so now we need to chain five again. One, two, three, four, five, and into the chain five space again, a cluster of three doubles. Chain one, and then we do our regular spine of three doubles, chain three, three doubles. It's all about symmetry. And I know I say that a lot, but so often it's true. All right, so three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing on this side. So going to, just like we did here, we need to chain one three doubles into the chain five space. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Single crochet into the loop. Chain three. Single crochet into the next loop. Chain three. Single crochet into the next loop, the last loop. All right, chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Do another cluster of three double crochets into the chain five loop. OK, 
Okay, chain one, and then our end clusters of three doubles, chain three, three doubles. And our three doubles. Ta-da! All right, and there you go. So I think this is coming along really quite spiffy and quite nicely, don't you? All right, so we are going to end this part of the tutorial here, and we are going to do a full repeat, don't you worry. And I'm also going to show you how to do the edging uh, as well. And so this is going to be sort of one of my little mini series because I don't like to rush. I like to be thorough. And so with that being said, you know, I really hope that you're enjoying this so far because you know I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know I appreciate your appreciation. Also, by the way, this shawl, not, not this that I'm working on here, but this finished one will be for sale in my Etsy store. I did recently put up a number of items that will be for sale as well. So, you know, go check it out. I'll have a link to that in the description box down below, as well as my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Would love to see you there too. And, you know, please hit subscribe to this channel because, you know, part two is coming and I would love to see you in the next episode. So until next time, I want you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.